Well, welcome and thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit about what makes our town work. So Steve, if you would. So in the West, water has always been the key to our economy and the vitality of our communities. And every great Western city has a story surrounding water. And tonight I wanna to share Bozeman's water story and make a few comments about the challenges and opportunities we face at this unique moment in history. You know, Bozeman was booming at the turn of the century and its population nearly doubled from 1900 to 1910. New industries such as pea canneries, the Lurkine Brewery, and the Story Milling Company brought new people to town, and those people demanded the public health benefits and convenience of a public water system. Bozeman's original water source was Lyman Creek, which is located in the Bridger Range north of town. And as our community grew, the city made improvements to its system by adding additional storage and replacing the original wooden pipe with cast iron pipe that's still in use today. But despite those improvements, the Lyman supply simply couldn't keep up with demand. So enter Bozeman city engineer, Mr. L.S. Thorpe and his hat, <laughs> who sought to solve this problem by developing additional water supplies south of town. Thorpe identified a number of options in his studies, but ultimately decided on water from Sourdough Creek, also known as Bozeman Creek, as the source of supply for the growing community. Development of that Sourdough Creek supply required the construction of the Mystic Lake Dam in the 1920s, and that dam served the residents of Bozeman for many years until it was breached or removed in 1984 for safety reasons. But water from Sourdough Creek is still an important supply today. Bozeman's final water source was the development of the highlight drainage during the Depression era. Use of Highlight Creek for agricultural irrigation dates back into the 1870s, but it was the growth of Bozeman's municipal needs, along with that agricultural supply, that really drove the final construction of Highlight Reservoir for a cost of about $350,000. Two transmission lines now carry water from Highlight and Bozeman Creek to Bozeman's new award-winning water treatment facility located at the mouth of Sourdough Canyon. There we treat water to meet all safe drinking water regulations and distribute it to town. A much simpler treatment system also exists at Lyman Creek. Those three water supply projects Lyman Creek in the 1890s, Bozeman Creek in the 1920s, and the completion of Highlight Reservoir shortly after the war have provided for the growth of Bozeman for all these years. And I'm fascinated between the parallels of those times and today. In the early 1900s, our civic leaders and citizens made investments in developing water sources that serve not only the needs of the day, but also generations that followed. And when you consider that our original water source has been supplying Bozeman with water for nearly 120 years, you can't help but admire the vision, the courage, and the investments made by those who came before us. So now let's look where we are today. First, let's talk about how we measure water supply. We measure it in acre feet. So if you've covered the playing field of Bobcat Stadium with one foot of water from goal line to goal line, that's an acre foot. It's about 326,000 gallons. Today, our existing water sources provide an average of 17 acre feet of water per day to Bozeman. 40% comes from Highlight, 40% from Bozeman Creek, and the remaining 20% from Lyman. Today, we have plenty of water. But like Bozeman's founders, we need to look to the future and predict what our needs will be. This graph shows what the future may look like. The blue line forecasts our available water resources, and the red line projects our future water demand. If we continue to use water as we are today, and we continue growing as we are today, we will develop a water gap, or a situation where demand exceeds supply. And when we have a gap, we run the risk of running out of water. Bozeman's Integrated Water Resource Plan is our strategy for providing water for the next 50 years. Dozens of supply alternatives were identified during the IWRP process, and we have a two-part strategy. We'll conserve water through conservation, and develop new sources of supply. Conservation is really about how we use water. And most of the year, water is used primarily for drinking, washing clothes, taking showers, flushing toilets. But use goes way up in the summer months because of outdoor irrigation for lawns and gardens. And in fact, 50% of our overall water use occurs just during the summer months. Water conservation can reduce water demand and delay the water gap. We've implemented rebates for water-efficient toilets and clothes washers and provided water-efficient shower heads. 
our irrigation programs educate and provide rebates so you can keep your lawn and garden green and healthy with a fraction of the water you use today. And those efforts are paying off. Since establishing Montana's first and only water conservation program just two years ago, you, the citizens of Bozeman, have reduced demand by over 8 million gallons a year. Conserving water is the right thing to do, and saving water is much less expensive than developing new sources of supply. The second strategic element of the IWRP is to develop additional sources of supply. We'll start by expanding the water we get from Lyman Creek and Highlight Reservoirs. It is the easiest water for Bozeman to use because we have the pipes and treatment plants in place to use it already. And we're looking at ways to increase storage in Bozeman Creek. But rather than build a dam as was done in the past, we're identifying ways to improve natural storage. By developing small ponds and improving the stream bank, we can create water storage that we can use in periods of high demand and improve the watershed in the process. Our final, most important, our final source will be groundwater, which is subsurface water access through wells. It's a critical option for Bozeman. Groundwater is resilient to drought, it's resistant to wildfire, and it requires much less treatment than surface water sources from lakes or rivers. It will be a challenge to locate the well fields and develop the legal underpinnings for being able to use the water. So what can you do to help? I think you can start by recognizing the accomplishments of Bozeman's founders. They were significant and we've benefited from them for years. You can appreciate our municipal watersheds. They have been and will continue to be a key to success as our community. And you can respect the resource by using water wisely, both indoors and out, and be willing to make the investments in our water system that future generations will need to prosper. Thank you.